Anybody come to worship him this morning? Come on, let's put those glad hands together and give God some praise. Bless us to see another Palm Sunday. Good morning, Pilgrim. And certainly good morning to those who are viewing us virtually. Once again, we are delighted to come wherever you may be today to let you know that Christ is still the answer for the world today. Why thy neighbor when you can live, look up and see God and know without the shadow of a doubt that your help is on the way. I don't know, but I just have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. The word says, for we know that all things, I wish I had about three Bible readers, work together for good to them that love the Lord. Come on, tell somebody new, you tell me, it's got to get better. <laughs> I feel better in the atmosphere this morning. Somebody shout, it's got to get better. He didn't bring us this far to leave us now. Was it not David that said, I would have fainted. I would have given up. I would have thrown in the tower unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, grab somebody by the hand and tell them, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. It feel like church in here already to me. God's been good to us. God's been good to us. Blessed us to see another Palm Sunday. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Amen. While you're standing, let's repeat together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, making me to lie down in green pastures, leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leading me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then Jesus said, when you pray, to say, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just look at somebody and tell them I have so much to be thankful for. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord.
What a friend. How many believe prayer still works? How many believe prayer still works? I'm gonna tell somebody, keep on praying. He still hears and answers prayer. Bless him. You all the time. Man, I'm so glad to see both of y'all. I don't know what in the world to do this for. Amen. Thank God for another Palm Sunday. Amen. We greet you with Jesus' joy this morning to our ministers who share with us today, certainly to our diaconate ministry, all of our servant leaders, the disciples of Pilgrim, our visiting friends, and those who are worshiping with us virtually we are delighted to come wherever you may be to let you know he's alive and well and we thank God for it we want to be in prayer for sister Lily Gray in the passing of her niece uh, Tamika Williams and uh, we're also praying for sister Savannah Burnett who had surgery this past week and uh, let's be in prayer. Let me acknowledge these cards with all of our thanks. It means more than we could ever say thank you in the passing of my brother Charlie Carter. This comes from Sister Lila Anderson. Also, your kindness means much more. Dear pastor and church family, for every prayer, every thought, every call, every card and all acts of kindness and love during my recovery. I thank God and I thank you always, Sister Dolores Reed. Amen. It's prayer time now. Did you stop to pray this morning? One of our deacons is going to come and lead us to the throne of grace. Every heart pray with Deacon Scott as he comes.
To God be the glory. As Deacon Pinnell would say, it's God, to God be the glory for the good things he has done. Humble your hearts before the Lord. Father God, we take time out to say thank you. Thank you for another Palm Sunday, Lord. Thank you for thinking about us, Lord. Thanking you for the blessings that you have stored upon us. I don't know about you, but as I look back over my life and the things that we have been through, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but you did. Yeah. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but you did. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Forgive us now, Lord, for the sins that we have done. Forgive us for the things that we have thought. Forgive us for the things we have said that's not worthy. Now, Father God, if I fail in action, please don't fail in granting. Now, Father God, we're about to take up our offering. Let it be for the upbuilding of thy kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.
stop the hall, can you just come up for a second? How many love the Lord this morning with your whole heart? That was about 15 of y'all. How many of y'all love the Lord with your whole heart? <laughs> oh!
sir. Anybody know the blood still works? Come on, let's hear it for the choir singing to the glory of our Christ. Thank God for our musicians, our male ushers are serving us today. I want you to know how much I appreciate your faithfulness. You serve us every Sunday morning. The blessings of the Lord be upon you as our prayer. We acknowledge this card. Thanks to all of you for everything you've done, for being the special people that you are. Thank you so very much. Love, Stephanie, Dalton Board, and family. May God bless each and every one of you. And we say together, amen. Once again, to all of our ministers, our diaconate ministry, servant leaders, disciples of Pilgrim, our visiting friends, we're so glad that you came to worship with us on today and those who are viewing us virtually. Let me just say to brother and sister Anderson, DJ, and his wife who's in the choir, they will observe their 41st wedding anniversary on Tuesday. Come on, let's celebrate them on this morning. Amen. Well, let's go to the word, the gospel according to John chapter number 12. I want to drop anchor at verse number 32. John chapter 12, verse 32. The King James Version renders the text on this wise. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Jesus says, and I. If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. You may be seated. I want to talk about the great attraction. The great attraction. I need your prayers. Many of us were riveted as we viewed our television screens on April the 15th, the year 2019. We watched the awful fire that burned the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, France. This cathedral, over 850 years old, its spire reaching up to the heaven, 750 tons, 1.5 million pounds of spire reaching up to the heavens. This marvel of French Gothic architecture, which was not only a working cathedral in France, but a world treasure. People from all over the world went to France, not just to visit the Eiffel Tower, but to see and be seen at the Cathedral of Notre Dame. This Gothic cathedral was made famous by Victor Hugo and his writings of the Hunchback of Notre Dame. St. Thomas Aquinas preached at the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Oh, brothers and sisters, this beautiful display of French architecture has stood for over eight centuries, but in one hour, the Cathedral of Notre Dame went up in smoke. That 750 ton spire crashed through the ceiling of that magnificent cathedral. And for a moment, the entire world seemed to stop and watch Notre Dame burn. It's interesting to note that 70% of the population of France is Catholic but only 10% go to mass on Sunday. But the entire city of Paris, the busiest city in the entire world, stopped to take notice that the Church of Notre Dame was on fire. Paris, France, being the busiest city in the entire world, stood still to watch Notre Dame on fire. Ah! I see something. Just suppose, just suppose that the believers here in Roanoke, Virginia, 
would catch on fire. Just suppose the Holy Ghost would set our hearts on fire and the city of Roanoke would stop to watch us burn. Oh, brothers and sisters, if we would get it in our minds and in our hearts that Jesus Christ is the Savior of this world, if we could ever shout over the fact that one Friday Jesus died just to save us and on one Sunday morning Jesus rose from the grave touch your neighbor and tell him and one day he's coming back again oh if we would just catch on fire the world would stop to watch the church on fire I need to ask you a question. When was the last time you caught on fire about your Jesus? When is the last time you caught on fire about your faith? When was the last time you burned with enthusiasm on a Sunday morning? Look at your neighbor and ask him, when was the last time you became so excited that you couldn't even wait to get in church. In fact, you got happy when you woke up. You got happy when you got in the car. You got happy when you put your foot on the church ground. Look at somebody, some every now and then you ought to get happy. You ought to catch on fire. Just suppose we caught on fire this morning right here in Pilgrim. We shouted until somebody heard the good news that Jesus is still mighty to save. Just suppose you and your role would catch on fire right now, excited about what God has already done in your life. Now, those of us who don't mind catching on fire, and I got some in here who will catch on fire in a New York minute. I ain't going to call nobody's name, but you know who I'm talking about. But let's just say one Sunday, try this one Sunday. Uh, get you a three by five index card. And if you have a hard time seeing, get a piece of paper, eight by 11, and put it on your pew and write on it. This is a disclaimer. I want you to put it where everybody can see it. Put on the disclaimer. Put on there, if you're going to sit on this row, this, no, this row is going to be noisy. If you're going to sit next to me, there's going to be a whole lot of racket on this pew. Put it on there. If you're going to sit in this section, it's going to get loud in just a few minutes. Because sooner or later, the preacher is going to mention the name of Jesus. And as soon as I hear his name, I'm going to get excited. You need to put it on your pew. I don't want to knock your head off. I don't want to knock over your purse or your wallet. So maybe you might want to sit somewhere else. Because God has been too good to me. For me just to sit here and just act like I don't know him. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I got about three in here. You want to say, I ain't going to wait till Easter Sunday morning. Because I might not live that long. In fact, I'm about ready to shout right now. I'm about ready to tell the Lord, thank you for the doors you've opened. Thank you for the prayers you've answered. Thank you for the tears you've tried. Thank you for the way you've made. Look at your name, tell me, I'm about ready to get noisy right now because he's been good to me. I heard the word of the Lord say, let the redeem yeah. of the Lord say so. Lay hands on your name and tell me you ought to say so. Let everything that have breath do what? Praise, Praise the Lord. Oh, y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down. I got some more. I got some more. Oh, brothers and sisters. 
Uh, there's nothing else that draws men and women, boys and girls like the uplifted Christ. 21 centuries of Christian history proves the drawing power of our Lord when he's properly lifted up. Yes, it's Christ who draws. It's Christ crucified who meets the deepest needs of the hearts of mankind. It is an atoning savior whose death for the sins of man makes the difference. Oh, we are saved from the holy wrath of an infinite holy God. Now, if we preach in the Christ other than the crucified Christ, men will not be drawn very long. If we preach in a gospel other than the gospel of atonement, that kind of gospel will not draw men very long. And hear me, pilgrim, when I say there are so many faiths out here now uh, that will not draw men merely because they present a gospel without atoning blood. There are all kinds of faiths out here today that draws crowds that have attracted movie actors and TV hosts. They like to fancy that they have a religion without paying the price. They have a semblance of God, but there's no sacrifice. In other words, there is no costly sympathy. They are peddling a bloodless gospel, and it does not draw men to Jesus Christ. Oh, brothers and sisters, so many faiths and beliefs are out here today. They have, an, they have a theology without a crucified Savior, and without an atoning blood, there can be no salvation. There can be no preaching without a crucified Christ. But Pilgrim, there is a question that I need to raise and that question is why does Christ lifted up on the cross still draw men unto himself you heard what Jesus said in the text he said and I if I be lifted up not your opinion not your philosophy not so theocentric piety but Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Not to a doctrine, not to some personal kind of deity, not to some church or ritual or creed or tradition. No, no. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth. I'll draw all men unto me. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me today when I tell you, if you only come to the Pilgrim Church because of the pastor, you ain't going to come very long. If you come to the church because it's a Baptist church, when life turns on you, and sometimes it will, you will seek salvation in some other group. If you come to the church for any other reason other than Jesus, I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them, you coming for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. May I press my claim a bit further? We're not here today because of some Baptist polity. We're here because of the person of Jesus Christ. Now, a crucified Jesus, he's still making people leave Bedford and Salem and Vinton and Franklin County. I got one here. He's come all the way from Lynchburg and beyond. And many of you today, you come to the church Sunday after Sunday because of the crucified Jesus. You do know he died, don't you? Didn't he die? And all oh, the reason we're here today is because one Friday 
on a hill called Calvary. They lifted him up. And hear me when I tell you, if Jesus is on your cross, that's what we call a crucifix. I said, if you got Jesus on the cross around your neck, that's a crucifix. He's a dead Jesus if he's still around your neck. That's why some denominations, they don't make no noise on Sunday morning in their sanctuary. You've been to some of them. Honey, they got a great big cross. And Jesus is still on the cross in their sanctuary. Well, if he's still on the cross, he's a dead Jesus. I thought about it. It don't make no sense to make no noise for a dead Jesus. But as for me, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives. I feel like hollering this morning. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. And he talks with me along life's narrow way. I wish I could get 25 folk to holler. He's alive. I need to pause for a minute. Rico, I need to pause for just a moment. And just to tell you, uh, you can't shout about no dead Jesus. And if he's dead, as far as you're concerned, when life get hard, and sometimes it will, when trouble comes and friends get few, I don't know about you, but I need somebody who's alive when I can't see my way. When, not if, but when I need a door open and a prayer answered. I need a living savior when my enemies start to lie on me. I need somebody who can come to my rescue. When old age comes and steals my health, I need somebody to walk with me. I can't shout over no dead Jesus. So then why, why does Christ lift it up from the cross still make men and women Boys and girls shout. Deacon Igerberger, two reasons come to my mind and I'll be done. Number one, the crucified Christ meets our greatest need. I said the crucified Christ mm -hmm, meets our greatest need. That's the first reason. So then what is our greatest need? Our greatest need our most, need, our most fundamental need is a savior. I, I thought about it, Boo Boo. I mean, Deacon Pinnell, I thought about it, that if we would have needed money, God would have sent us an economist. If we would have needed wisdom, God would have sent us a philosopher. But since we, yes, sir, but since we needed salvation, God sent us a savior. And all oh, brothers and sisters, all oh, men, women, boys, and girls need an atoning savior who can by his death make perpetuation for our sins, thus reconciling us to a holy God, delivering us from his awful wrath, and brings us out into the sunlight of his glorious favor. Now, Christianity is the only religion, get this, that offers an atoning savior. I said Christianity is the only religion that offers an atoning savior. I didn't say Buddha. Not Buddha, the, the founder of Buddhism. They offer enlightenment. But he nor his faith Buddhism, they do not offer salvation. Confucius offers a great teacher. 
but he doesn't offer an atoning savior. Allah and the Muslim faith offers Allah and the Muslim faith. But Allah nor the Muslim faith do not offer mm -hmm, salvation or an atoning savior. And for that reason, in the language of the Reverend Dr. A. Lewis Patterson, he said, Buddha's bones are somewhere bleaching on a lonely hillside. Allah's voice has been hushed by death. Confucius' vision is silent, and his vision is resting on the couch of nature's night to await the dawning of eternity's writing. But the grave in Jerusalem is still empty. Look at somebody and tell me it's still empty. The cross that stood at Calvary is still empty. Oh, brothers and sisters, we do not serve a dead Jesus on a crucifix. No, no, we serve a risen Savior. And he's alive and well today. And I don't know how you feel about it. But I thank God this morning that the tomb is still empty. Jesus became sin for us. He who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus the Christ offers himself lifted up on a cross to draw us from the curse of the law. Thus he became a curse for us. I must not hold you, but the word says, cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. And as here, I think I need to pause for a moment just to tell somebody right here in Pilgrim, or maybe you in the virtual audience, and that is some of you, and I'm not mad with you, but some of you, uh-huh, you may think that you're pretty good. And if you're here, uh, just here because the rest of us are here, uh, you, you may feel as though you don't need all of this cross talk this morning. You, you don't need all of this Jesus conversation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're saying, Pastor, it sounds good, but I'm going to just tell you the truth. I just came because it's Sunday, and I just want to see what's happening over there at the Pilgrim Church. You're saying, and I hear you in the spirit saying, I really don't need all of that what you're talking about right now because I, I'm a nice person. I don't steal. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I haven't broken to anybody's house. I'm basically a good person. Well, let me see if I can help you with that this morning. The only ones in here uh -huh, who are above sin are those of us who are sitting up here on the pulpit. And the only difference between us and you, we're just up a little higher. But when church is over, we're going to come down there where y'all are, and we're going to be just as low down as you are. Because Romans 3.23 says, uh, don't say y'all have sinned. No, no, no. It says all have sinned. And that's why all of us need an atoning Savior. Now, it's interesting, Sister Diane, that the Bible uses a few words to talk about sin in the world. Uh, the first word that the Bible uses about sin is the word trespass. Can I get the church to shout trespass? Trespass means to step across the line. Trespass means to color outside of the line to go astray. Trespass means to step over the boundary. Now, everybody in here, including Dwight Steele, can testify to the fact that every last one of us has stepped across the line a time or two. And all you got to be careful now when you step across the line, merely because it's a thin line. It's a thin line between weakness 
and wickedness. Preach Dwight, I believe I will. So thin is the line, in fact, it's so thin you don't know or realize when you've crossed it. Talk to me if you can. And that's why you and I, we need to stay close to the Lord because trespass means to step over the line. You, you know, the Bible talks about sin. Sin in the Greek is hamashia. Hamashia means missing the mark. In other words, I aimed at it, but I missed it. I tried my best, but I still missed it. Somebody right here has had the same experience that I had. What experience are you talking about, brother pastor? Well, when I wake up in the morning, I really intend to have a good spiritual, godly, holy day. But then round 8.15, for some of y'all, it's 9 o'clock a.m. For others, it's 12 noon. And for still others, it's around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. But for Dwight, it's just a little past 8 o'clock. After all that praying that I just got through with, even when I'm praying, stuff comes in my mind that has no business being there and then I have to say to myself now how in the world did that get up in there now I ain't talking to some of the super saints that might be here this morning you know the ones who see no evil and hear no evil and say no evil I ain't talking about y'all I'm talking to the real folk like myself who aimed at it but we missed it often see how quiet it just got in here Paul says uh -huh, every time I desire to do good evil is always present Paul said the good that I would do I find myself not doing and the evil that I don't want to do that's exactly what I do Paul said oh wretched man not that I was but that I am and then I'm about there there's another word Reverend Spivey uh -huh, that the Bible uses for sin uh -huh, and that word is iniquity can the church shout iniquity now that word iniquity that means there's something that's bent that word iniquity means there's something that's crooked don't get mad with me but uh, truth be told there's something crooked in every last one of us see how quiet it just got I said there's something bent there's something crooked in every last one of us and it's right here that I need to warn you uh, maybe you didn't know it but you sitting right next to a crook. So then, watch your pocketbook. Watch your billfold. Make sure you got your cell phone close at hand. I don't care how good they look. They're crooks. I'm sorry, I can't hear nobody. I don't care how holy they act around you. They might be made up and dressed up to the T. They're still crooks. Everybody. Did I say everybody? Everybody in here and those of viewing is a crook. But I'm glad to tell you, grace and mercy pleads our case when we don't even want to do right I can't speak for you this morning but I'm glad he still looks beyond our faults and he sees our knees if you're glad about it lift your hand and shout yes Y'all sit down, I got some more.
Can I talk to you? I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk. You, you, you know, you know, you know, you know, Sister Scott, there are some decisions now that I think about it, I wish I would not have made. There are some wrong roads. I wish I would not have traveled. I can't speak for y'all, but I got some skeletons in my closet that if I opened the door, every last one of them would fall out. But I met David on the way here and he told me to tell you, surely, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. I thank God this morning for grace, mercy, and forgiveness. I thank God that I have an atoning Savior. That's why they lifted Jesus up. And I'm happy to tell you, he's still drawing all men unto himself because a crucified Savior meets our deepest need. You know what? I'm so glad this blew my mind. God forgives the stuff that we haven't even done yet. Y'all ain't got to talk to me because you know I enjoy my own preaching. God forgives the stuff that we haven't even done yet. Let, 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 me, let me back up for a moment and talk to that person who has not gone as far as you could have gone. And it's here that I need to tell somebody, some of y'all need to stop bragging about some stuff. Some of y'all need to stop bragging. Honey, I ain't never been to jail. You ain't been to jail yet. I, I wish I had some witnesses. If, if we're truthful, since we've been a Christian, we've done some wrong. Since we've been on the Lord's side, we've entertained some thoughts that are not holy. Since we've known Jesus, we have not dotted every I. We have not crossed every T. And we have not placed a hole in every E. That's why we ought to be grateful for goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. I need another crook. Who knows if it had not been for the Lord who's been on our side. You know I, we're not in jail this morning. Not because we don't deserve to be there. But because salvation is not just what God has already done. It's what the Lord has kept us from. If you know I'm right this morning, lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Yes, he's kept me from seen and unseen danger. And so a crucified Savior meets our deepest need. And then secondly, somebody holler secondly while I sip this water. Secondly, as I hasten to a close, a crucified Savior reveals the love of God. That's what this palm service is all about. That's what Lent and Easter is all about. Uh, we've said uh, often here at the Pilgrim Church, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Tell your neighbor, that's John 3.16. But get this, when you get a chance, you need to read 1 John 3.16. The old preachers used to say, I John 3.16. It says, hereby perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And then in Romans 5 and 8, Paul says, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners 
Christ died for us. Now, brothers and sisters, if that doesn't move you, it may be because you're still thinking you're pretty good already. But for those of us who know that we are crooks, those of us who know that we done been low down, we know we really ain't even got no business being up in here. We know if the Lord just turned his back, we'd be some of the biggest fools in Roanoke. We know there's no good thing in us. But look at your neighbor and tell him, but God, he just chooses to love us. I thought somebody would say something right there. The word says there's none righteous, not one, but God just commended his love towards us that while I was yet in my sins, Christ died for us. Somebody holler, that's love. Y'all still missed it. In other words, Jesus didn't wait for me to get my act together. He didn't wait for me to get on my feet. And I'm glad about it. You see, church is not for people who are on their feet. Church is not for folk who have it all together. Church is not for people who are perfect and who've never made any mistakes. Rather, church is for people who have some scars on their back. Church is for the folk who messed up big time. Church is for people who know if it had not been God who saved you, we'd be in a devil's hell right now. But I'm God, glad God saved me. Not because I was worth saving. He saved me because he loves me. I'm through, but in my closing, let me say, uh, Scott, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he even cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But oh, I'm glad he did. And uh, Deacon Johnson, I'm not glad not just on Sunday, but I'm glad on Monday. I'm glad on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm glad Thursday and Friday and Saturday. I'm glad when I wake up in the morning and I think about where I could be. When I think about what the Lord could have allowed to happen to me. But God has kept me in my right mind. God has placed a hedge all around me. So that when my enemies try to get to me, God blocks them. I found out on this journey, somebody help me shout, no weapon formed against me. They will not prosper. If you're here today, I think I need to tell you, you're not here because you have a degree from the college. But some folk who have a college degree, they slept under the bridge last night. You're not here because you've been so careful by going to the doctors. You've kept all of your appointments. And some folk who kept all their appointments with the doctor, they died this morning. You're not here because you wear a great big cross around your neck. Because there's a difference in wearing a cross and bearing a cross. I'm happy just to tell you, the attraction that drew us this morning is a crucified Jesus. The reason all of us got up and got dressed this morning to come to the church, because one Friday on a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for us. He didn't die for good people. He died for sinners like you and me. I wish I had some witnesses who knew the great attraction today is not this beautiful sanctuary that we've been blessed to worship in. It's not even this choir that have lifted their voices today. It's not even in Dwight Steele's preaching because truth be known, the biggest crook in the building is preaching to you right now. But I have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the 
power may be of God and not us. I wish I had one or two more sinners who knew if the Lord had not saved you, you and I would be lost in hell. You are attracted to this Jesus because he was born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, baptized in the Jordan. He performed miracles in a desert place. He wept over Jerusalem, prayed in Gethsemane. You and I, we're here today because he's Adam's redeemer, Abel's vindicator, Abraham's sacrifice, and he's Noah's ark. We're here today because he's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's Job's horse pawing in the valley. He's the only begotten son. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's older brother. He's Matthew's king. Mark's suffering servant. Luke's great physician. And John's word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. He's the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. He's the blessed and only potentate. He's the faithful and true witness. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Old school said he's the bright <laughs> and morning star. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the day spring of Israel. He's the stem of Jesse. He's the rod of David. He's distinctive and supernatural. He's superlative in his sovereign majesty. He's exclusive in spiritual beauty. He's radiant in eternal splendor. He's matchless in his deity. He's the God of gods. He's the prince of peace. And he's the fairest of 10,000. Yes, he is. Y'all know him, don't you? I'm going to try that one more time. Y'all know him, don't you? Yes, ah, one Friday on Golgotha's hill, Jesus died. But the late Dr. Noah Taylor used to say right early, mm, Sunday morning, he rose. I said he rose. And now, as wonderful as that attraction is, that's not the greatest attraction. Because one of these days, the sky will break wide open and the warrior King Christ will leave his seat in glory. He'll wave his hand and swear that time that has been will be no more. That will be a wonderful attraction. But by and by, when the morning comes, all of the saints of God will gather home. We will tell the story of how we overcome. We might not understand it now, but lean on your neighbor and tell them we will understand it better by and by. Now, if you want to shout over there, you might want to practice over here. If you're going to give him glory over there, why not glorify him over here? Why, Pastor Steele? Because he's worthy. Somebody help me shout worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Why do you want us to praise him? Because he's been good to us. And the more we lift him up, the more he will draw. Anybody glad about it? If you're glad about it, shout yes! Jesus said, and I 
if I be lifted up from the earth he says I'll draw all men unto me doors of the church are open boy girl man or woman he's drawing you today I invite you to come right now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Give me F right quick. Everything be all right. The door is open. Everything will be all right. Come on, I'm waiting for you. Oh, after the storm It's gonna pass over, yeah Everything Be alright Oh, everything Thank you, brother Be alright the storm, yeah, is going to pass on. Everything is all right. Everything is all right. Anybody believe that today? It's going to pass over Everything Everything Last time Everything Yeah, all right gospel has been preached I trust you got something out of the word on today Amen. and I if I be lifted up from the earth Jesus says I'll draw all men unto me God willing I'm planning on being back at uh at the 1045 service. This is Palm Sunday. I'm going to talk about the tragic side of a triumphal event. There's something in that text that the Lord wants to talk to us about. And uh, don't be ashamed to praise your God. Nobody knows like you know. Some of us in here right now supposed to be dead. But I wish I could get somebody to holler, but God. About five of us in here should have had a nervous breakdown by now. Look at somebody and tell them, but God. I got about 30 in here. The devil tried his best to kill, steal, and destroy you and your family. I wish I could get some out of the holler. But God, anybody other than the 40 that I just mentioned got a but God testimony? Amen. 
Let me just announce while we're still have persons who are viewing us virtually, God wills it. So tomorrow, Tuesday, and Thursday, we're going to worship at 12 o'clock for our Lent service. I want to invite you on Wednesday to follow me and in my Bible study group, if you can, over to the Loudoun Avenue Church at 12 o'clock. And then Friday at 12, we're going to meet at Hill Street for the seven last sayings. I think I have the last singing. I wish they would have made me first, but I got the last one. So you say a prayer for us and the Lord will do you well. Uh, we're going to have a few more announcements. Don't leave. But let me just say to those who view us virtually, as I normally do, that there is a fountain that is filled with blood and never lost its power. He has love so strong that you can feel it even in the darkest night. Listen, whatever you do and wherever you go, take the Lord God with you everywhere you go and everything will be all right until we meet again. Be blessed.